This episode is supported by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Summer mocktail smoothies just hit the pool deck at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Try the Island Punch Smoothie, Mango Berry Cosmo Smoothie, or Watermelon Mojito Smoothie. Order in the app, online, or in cafe. You're on Tropic Time now. And now, live from Pod Cabin in Burbank, California, it's the Allison Rosen is your new best friend show. Tonight, Allison welcomes your guests. She's a writer and producer of Bob's Burgers in Central Park. It's Nora Smith. And she's a writer and producer and friend of the founder of Denny's, Dennis Eggs. It's Wendy Molyneux. Chef Jeff is here to declare that unlike Taylor Swift, he actually produces his podcast live, baby. And her husband Daniel said, hop on board the love bus and say hello to your new best friend, Allison Rosen. Allison. Hello, my little hairy bow, unicornalicious gummy unicorns. That name is a little much. That particular carbohydrate was sent in on Patreon. 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 By Jennifer Lounsbury. Um, and yes, I am on Patreon. All sorts of fun stuff over there. I just uploaded a friend zone with fan favorite Jenna Kim Jones. We get into wow. everything. Um, and, you know, more fun stuff over there. So there's friend zones. There's a little where you can text me. I'll text you back. You can submit carbs. If you sign up, which I hope you will, and you do an annual subscription, you get two months free. Which is a good deal. Patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. Okay, I am very, very excited to say hello to my guest, Wendy Molino. Hello. Hi. I just realized I still have my sunglasses on. I just, so I'm going to switch them out for I, my regulars. I thought you were in character. Yeah, yeah. I was going to do a cool character named <laughs> Joey Spaghetti. Yes. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I have a fedora in my purse that I'm going to put on too. I can't wait to see the uh, show. He's a lot of fun. You're going to yeah. like him. I like him already. And then Nora Smith. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Now, this is your first time on the group show. First time without my dad. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You and- doing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm doing anything. Are you nervous? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. You and your dad. Uh, I just have to address the fact that every time I go to say your last name for a second, I think, wait, is that her last name? I don't know why. Smythe? Smythe. That's why. Because I said it wrong. Yeah. Um, do you feel like a, Sm- a Smith Smythe? Um, it's pretty boring uh mm. i'll say it um but my husband has a, a last name that no one ever says correctly and he's passed that along to our children so to me like the power of going to a restaurant and saying smith yeah like it sounds like it's uh nice i sort of right like, rub that in his face nor are we going to be allowed to talk about this the that your name was involved in one of the best stories of all time at work regarding work, the other Nora Smith, the other Nora Smith. Yeah, Has that been I don't discussed think I on the show. I don't think so. No, this is a, it's a real corker, guys. Okay, yeah. even now, Joey Spaghetti. Uh, is I want to hear Joey Spaghetti's cigar. take on it. When Joey Spaghetti hears this story, his cigar <laughs> <I> waggles. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if this is going to be a Joey Spaghetti story. I can't wait. It's going to be a Nora Smith tale that Joey Spaghetti is going to be rooting her on from the sidelines. I'd like to see whose side he takes, mine or yeah, hers. Yeah, yeah, right. I can't wait. Okay, well, welcome back. Thank you. For the first time, with if you need to if you need to call your dad, if you need to page him. He's ready. Yeah. He's actually ready to drive here. At any it wa- That's you- actually probably true. The episode <laughs> with you and Pete. The episode with you and your dad, Pete, was truly one of my favorite episodes in so long. So, And Wendy, thank you for... Uh, brokering that yeah well that's, a, got that's what joey spaghetti does you know how spaghetti is like a long strand that can connect connect yes. two mouths yeah like lady it the can tramp. connect two mouths for a podcast as well that's what it says huh. on your business card right mm-hmm. it's a it's a lot <laughs> i connect two mouths that's what <laughs> my business card says yeah. and it has two mouths and a long strand of spaghetti <laughs> sometimes the mouths are related yeah there's no mm. phone number or email to contact me either it's just my name you and hold... then joey spaghetti in quotes like my real name joey spaghetti in quotes and then i connect two mouths yeah and those words are a long piece of spaghetti and there's a mouth on each side of the card right mm. if you hold spaghetti and make a wish sometimes he appears it's... yeah that's true that's part of rarely. His mythology. <laughs> rarely yeah 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 <gasps> Jeff Fox, hello. Hi, Allison. I like your energy. <laughs> I have the zoomies. <laughs> you clearly have the zoomies. 
Thank you very much. And it should be um, disclosed that Jeff and Nora are friends in real life. Friends in in the IRL. We are friends Mm -hmm. in real life. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to see my friends. I say that every time I see him. Is this work or is this life? I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. Now, Wendy, Nor and I debated whether to tell you the hilarity that occurred before you arrived. Oh, and boy. we're going to tell you. Okay. Um, okay. So we have a new puppy. I okay. You saw him. I didn't. Yes. And then as we were on our way out, uh, Nora said, is Wendy back there? And I said, <laughs> I, I said, <laughs> Sorry. I said, no, she's in her crate eating dinner. <laughs> and then I realized that's not who she was asking about. Because there's Wendy the dog. And I didn't Wendy immediately think it was <laughs> yeah. about someone else. <laughs> she said her crate eating dinner. Yeah. I said, good. Like, right away. I said, good. Yeah. No, that's... <laughs> I mean, I work discipline. with Nora, and she knows I eat in a crate during lunch. Because if they don't it crate me, I take other people's food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have to crate me, and then I take a little nap after I'm done eating my salad. I get, like, a sweet green salad, mm-hmm. eat it out of we a put bowl it through of my the face. Bars. Yeah. And then I take a little nap, and then I wake up, and they let me out so I can do some alts on the show. Yeah. Is that, what, is that your business? Is the alts? I mean, you do alts on the show. That's commonly what we're doing up to at work. So these days, not these days. Not these days. Oh, no. you guys both work on Bob's Burgers. Yeah, so that's how we like, met. What? That's yes, totally and you met. guys are friends IRL too. Yeah, yeah. And Wendy and I are friends IRL. I know, and I feel like Nora Who's the and I? best friends. Well, and I knew Nora's husband, John Schrader, yeah. who is also at Bob's Burgers, and that's how they met. But I knew John from before. Bob's Burgers. Wait, so how it's did a you long, know John from before? My friend Lindsay Stoddart, who now works on Bob's Burgers. Oh. I was good friends with Lindsay, and Lindsay knows John from high school. What? So it's a long chain of people. Wow. And I know Lindsay from improv. So it was like, first Lindsay and John, then I meet Lindsay, then I meet John, and then years later, I, but in the in between times, I meet you at college. Mm-hmm. Jeff and John meet somehow. And yeah. then later, we all meet each other again. It all goes back to Wendy, though. It's no, it goes back to Lindsay. Oh, it right? goes back to Lindsay. John, Lindsay and John. Yeah. We're yeah. all the spaghetti. Yeah, yeah this is what I'm saying. A strand of spaghetti can connect two mouths. <laughs> I love you know? it. It's beautiful. Okay, what is this Nora Smith story? <clears throat> uh, okay, so I was leaving work, and I got... This was the beginning of the story. I was leaving work, and I got a call. This was a, years ago, a few years it ago. Was, the Emmys were coming... The Emmy Awards were coming up, and mm-hmm. we had been nominated and I got a call and I was like is this Nora Smith and I was like yeah and she was like I've been looking for you I'm trying to pick up my Emmy tickets and for the for Bob's Burgers and I was like okay um I think maybe Lauren had like hinted at this before and she was like I was like she's like I'm Nora Smith and I was like okay um I'm willing to hear your side. Did you work on the show Bob's Burgers? And she was like, that's not the point. She said, that's not the point. Wow. Which reminded me of uh, an ex-boyfriend in the past where I was like, are you seeing someone else? And he said, that's not the point. And I was like, okay. You definitely Sometimes seen people someone else. Say that. Yeah. And then you killed him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, it turns out she... Uh, it was a woman. It was a woman. Also named Nora Smith. Who yes. sounds like she was irate already. Yeah, she was so angry that I was ta- rightfully taking my Emmy tickets. And she had submitted some writings, some comedic, some not, mm. in her words, to a database. <laughs> and then she was also in uh, BMI, which is like the music, if you write music. Like, and she lived paid. far away in she a different in, like, state Jackson, and in no way lived here or worked on any television shows. No. So it was a lady who just, at some point, she asserted, had sent some material to someone and then she was under the impression she had somehow by a BMI by BM- a, but by a circuitous in her mind but yeah. I'm just trying to see it from her point of view in a circuitous like series of events she thought she had somehow been nominated for an Emmy for the for- specific show Bob's Burgers yes yes. I did I became obsessed with this woman mm-hmm. and I saw I found an interview that she did. I don't know where it went. <laughs> it was on the internet. Uh, and it was like, this year I'm nominated for Bob's Burgers. Uh, and she said she submitted, she mit- submits her writing, some comedic, some not, uh, to a database. And then BMI, which we were both in, uh, would they started just sending her my checks. 
Oh, so wow. So she'd been getting your... I forgot this part. She'd yeah. been getting your she'd, royalties. Yeah. And like cash tens out. of dollars of my royalty tens checks. Tens of dollars. And she'd been cashing them. I mean, why she'd would been she cashing them. not be able to? Right. She's, her name's Nora Smith. Yeah. Um, and then for some reason, the Emmys did say through BMI, which was a weird thing, like, you've got Emmy tickets out here or whatever. So she... Tells everyone in her world flies out. It gets sad. It's very also very sad. Yes. She flies it out. Strange, it, already, it already feels It was a strange sad. events. She definitely. She flies out. I think actually the first time I was in San Francisco, like with my on a vacation and Lauren was like, funny thing, someone is like going to get your Emmy tickets or something. And then so she flies out. She calls me furious. How does she get your number? Someone gave it to her. Someone gave it to her thinking, so you could like sort it out yourself. Out, you know? Yeah, this is yeah. Nora v. Nora. We don't, we don't know which one's the right one. Only they know. <laughs> so she like is furious at me, and she, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over her now. And on Facebook, she's like, it's sad, but she's like, clearly doesn't get the Emmy tickets. And she writes, and she had told everyone like, I'm going out to L.A. for the Emmys. Yeah. No one questions it. Like, hey, that's how showbiz works. <laughs> And she wrote, like, had a family emergency have to go back home on Facebook. Oh. So I was part, part of me was like, you liar. Yeah. And then another part is like, she this has, is very sad. She has a daughter. It's a mix of infuriating. It's sad that and she has a daughter. Sad. It's sad that anyone has daughters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have in this economy? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was very weird. Uh, I was obsessed, obsessed with her for a while. I could very easily get back into it. Um, and then we talked about it at work. Like, it came up just the other day for some reason. Yeah, because it was, because it is, like, it It did start as a mix-up. But most people on the receiving <laughs> yeah. end of that yeah. mix-up would yeah. say, hey, hold on. Like, if I got think- nominated for a Tony this year, <laughs> yeah, I would think... Someone has erred. Let me retrace my steps this year. Yeah. Did, was I in a Broadway play? Yeah. No. Did I write the book? Did I write any of the music? I did I like didn't. text someone uh, like a musical note that I went, one time. Yeah. I went to a musical last summer, yeah. like in person, but they yeah. don't some give musical, an award. Some musical, some not. Yeah. Some musical, <laughs> some not. But yeah. it is, I think it's that idea we all want something like that. It's like when I yeah. was a kid and I would ride my bike around and I thought the Olympics people might drive by and see me riding my bike and put me in the Olympics. I genuinely thought that. I Bicycle was riding. always yeah. ready to be discovered at a mall or to fall in love at an airport. Yes. Oh, I thought oh, I would yeah. fall in love at a tennis tournament I went to. Mm-hmm. And a guy smiled at me outside the bathrooms and I was like, yes. It's and happening. then nothing else happened. Yeah. <laughs> he just smiled. So we all have stuff, but usually, yeah, yeah there's a, like a stopgap in our minds where we're like, no, wait, this can't be. Right. Right. So she was she clearly. She just went so far. And then that she was mad. That was like right. kind of the kicker was to she be was angry. She at me. Yeah. That I, uh, that I did work on Bob's Burgers and that gave me the right to go to the Emmys. Did you oh, explain man. to her? I, it wasn't that- the longest conversation. She, she wasn't ready for. <laughs> Reason at that point. Mm-hmm. She wasn't ready for another Nora Smith to tell her things. Um, I wonder if she's listening right now. I she think she's this is going to start it all off again. On family Guy at this point or something. Like, right. she must be she's on Grimsburg. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> she's on Grimsburg. Yeah. Let's hope. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting a little bit. Okay, I haven't finished Baby Reindeer, but I'm getting a little bit Baby Reindeer vibes from the story. But I think she dropped it, right? So it's not Baby she Reindeer in that it. she dropped it. You never, she didn't pursue you any further or the situation any further. No, and who knows, like, what her fa- her family was just like, okay, you had a family right. She probably we don't just have felt to hear upset and embarrassed, and she yeah. couldn't believe it was. Like, part of her just wanted to believe it, and so mm-hmm. she did and yeah. then but after like the baby reindeer i have now i have to admit i'm only two episodes in okay. how many are you in i uh i'm four in i'm zero. Oh, jeff have you seen it no i haven't seen it okay well but, but i think I'm she didn't drop it right she kept going yes like that's and that's, that's when you know story. somebody yes yes and and apparently apparently people have netflix story? for 170 million dollars because people even because people have found the real one like it wasn't concealed yeah. enough evidently yeah, yeah. um but I think I'm not spoiling anything by saying everyone knows, like, it gets dark, right? Yes, I do know that. The fourth episode is where it takes a turn. So I had been prepared. I, like, read about what happens and stuff, and I'm like, I can handle this. And then it hit me so much harder than I expected. And there's only two more episodes. And Daniel and I have intended to finish it, but I just find my, I like, late at night when I'm t- 
turning on the TV before bed, I don't find myself wanting to revisit, even though I want to see how it ends. Mm -hmm. But it just like, it got very intense. I have a question about what, like, why, why do we think it's in the world? Like, Mm -hmm. does it have any sort of, like, what does it tell us about crazy women that there are a lot? Like, what's like, it's like, right. Um, that's a good question. No, this guy's a lot more vulnerable than you would think in yes. some ways. Yes, says that on the billboards. Is that what? That he's yeah. vulnerable. It does? I think it says, like, brave and vulnerable or something. Yeah. Right, but I think in this case it's true. Like, he, I don't think I, can I spoil some I think small I know. thing? Does somebody yeah. need to hum? I th- No, I, yeah. I think I know the I think, thing. Oh, go for it. And that really we'll happened. Give a, he as well. had. He we'll give was. A warning to listeners. He had like it was like it wasn't just this lady. Something else had happened in his life, and there's yeah. some things in his personal life yes. that make him especially vulnerable. Right. That make him more like, um, uh, amenable to her, I guess. Because there's this question of like, yeah, yes, he becomes. They sort of he becomes sympathetic to her. Mm. Um, yes. So it's yes. it's really it's about trauma, really. Yeah. Yeah. He, something terrible happened to him. Also, yes. Mm-hmm. So two things, I guess. Yes. Just both this lady and someone else. So it was like a thing. But I mm-hmm. haven't finished it. But that's why, like, I feel like I just, I'm like, I know it's going to be very effective mm-hmm. and I'm going to be affected by it. Yeah. And so I don't, like, I, it's been hard to be like, that's what I'm going to watch right yes. now. Or I could watch the new show about making the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders team. Is that good? I just started it this okay. morning. I always have to have, like, a reality thing I'm watching mm-hmm. that's like kind of light like the kardashians or that or something that just doesn't really has no i don't feel yeah. that much mm-hmm. when i'm watching it have you watched so. traders at all i did but oh i have a big problem with traders i can't remember just if i talked about it on the show but i don't think i have i don't think you have is that i like to play games and logic games and the people on the game will just be like I think they're a traitor. Oh, yeah. With no follow up reasoning. And I'm like, this is bonkers. You have to have a reason. And their strategy, like, they kept going, like, but they're not acting weird. I'm like, right. The traitors on purpose would be not acting. Like, it drives me insane. And Jeff and, and my oldest child. We're like, you're being very unpleasant while we watch the show. I had something to say at almost every moment. <laughs> and they did not enjoy watching it with me. So we did not watch another yeah. show. Was, I think it's unfortunate because you're so, like, you would be the all star of that. Wendy is very good at games, and she's very good at games where you have to convince, manipulate people, and uh, and so you would be very right. good I at like, traders. Like mafia, yeah, I like those types of games. I right. like where games you, where you're supposed to. But the thing is, because are, I don't like to like, I also like Monopoly. Like, I like to play in games where you have to like manipulate and lie. Yes, because I am not. I like almost am. I think it was a time when I was younger, like a lot of people, where I would tell a few lies here and there to try to impress people. You know, yeah. like in college, you'd exaggerate like, oh, yeah, I've seen that band or something like, like <laughs> right. something kind of harmless. But I hated it and yeah. it made me feel terrible. Um, and then at a certain point, I was like, why would anyone ever tell a significant lie? You know what I mean? Right. And so, But I like in a game to Right. To deceive and manipulate for game purposes is right. very fun. Yes. Because it's so like a way of letting John. that part of your... Yes. John, who, who also, I think, also... is not a liar in real life. He's almost yeah. like on <laughs> to a problem. Too much. Too yes. Much. He says too much yeah. about too many things. But John, I think that... That's a compliment, John, for me. Uh, I know he's going to listen and then he'll you think say we're too insulting many things. Him. I don't know. He doesn't listen to any podcast ever, by the way. No, I just mean he, he doesn't in the say world. too many things. I just mean he's like, if he doesn't like somebody, you know. If he likes yes. somebody, you know. It is very blatant. But yeah. then when you play a game where you're supposed to deceive people, he's very good he at it. He totally convinces me all the time. Yeah. I've been like, you me can't too. lie to me right now. Like, <laughs> it will hurt us. And he's like, can still do it. And he's like, he's yeah. Really good. But well, he knows. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, so you guys are on another level. And so I think trade watching traders where it's like people that don't know what they're doing. It makes me feel insane. Yes. Yeah. Tom, was Tom yeah. Sandoval? on that do you know I who don't that know. is okay I think he might have been one of the people but I don't watch any Vanderpumps at mm. all they're pretty good so that's what I've heard yeah yeah that's do they do they get drunk and fight a lot though I don't like drunken fighting reality shows I like laying on beds and floating in pools reality shows oh there's a little bit of both but there's a fair amount of uh tan people yelling at each other yeah yeah, N- yeah. N- at this point many of them are sober but it's still mostly about conflict. Right. 
Um, which is what The Real Housewives is, which is yes. why I don't really enjoy Real Housewives yeah. either. There's too much yelling. Wait, what's a good floating on pools one? Like the Kardashians. Like okay, they, do, yeah. they pretend that nothing's happening in their lives of any import. They mm-hmm. pretend it's all like baby showers and like going to Aspen and all this stuff that's just like, okay, that's fun. But then all the background stuff that's happening in their lives is absolutely batshit. I haven't watched in a long time. I'm very tempted to get back into it. Get back into it. It's a lot of fun. You've never seen it at all? No. I don't know. Only like when someone talks about a fight, like I've seen the Mm -hmm. one where somebody fought, like somebody got into a... Yeah, Kim and Courtney one Small time argument. got into a fight, and <laughs> one of them scratched the other one's arm. Oh, I can't remember. That really? was the only time they got in. Yeah, huh. but Wait. it was sad. I invited. I think Sarah Baker's been on the show, yes. right? And um, then our other friend Martha Kelly, who's from Baskets, mm-hmm. um, and is really funny. And uh, they had never seen the Kardashians, and so they wanted to watch it with me. So we watched this year's season premiere, and then my husband and our oldest kid watch it with us as well. And it's terrifying how much information I know about them like because everyone would be like who's that and I'm like well that's Scott Dizzik Courtney has three kids with him but he's had a big struggle with drugs and alcohol and now they're split up and now she's with Travis you know it's hard for Scott because and like literally any question I could talk for a long time about the topic Mm -hmm. who's your favorite Kardashian (sighs) that's a great question I mean overall I guess Kim Mm. Kim's my favorite Kardashian because she's like the master of ceremonies, you know. Without Kim, there's no Kardashian. This is true. You can see it in the, if they still have the same credits. Where's Kim? Uh, yeah, they don't have the same credits. Oh, because they're not on E anymore. But, yeah. but I feel like a little bit from my years of watching, I feel like Kim is almost like a cipher. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what's fun about her. Okay. You don't really know what she's thinking. I know. Do you feel like if you had like little girls in the house that like, not that I'm looking for reality TV for my little girls, watch, but I'm just saying, like, would you say it's like a positive no. for little, like, strong, no. powerful women, or like, no, no. Okay. There's way too wow. much talk about like looks and bodies, and now they all have these like wasp waists and stuff. Right. Like, I'm immune to this at this point. I'm yeah. like, roll me into my grave, yeah, <laughs> and mark it with a little crone marker. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> to- but totally like, gonna... so I don't care. I'm not going to engage in any of their beauty practices. Yeah. But I would not want to encounter it at like age 12. Right. It would be very unrealistic. Okay. Yeah. Maybe just yeah. a couple episodes. What's a good reality show for girls? For children? For girls? There are none, right? Yeah, There's I don't. I can't oh, you know, imagine. Survivor's fun Survivor's to watch. pretty we watch Survivor. I feel like. Or if, if nothing else, it's like sort of neutral. It's like a game. It's a yeah. game. There's like. There's a lot of lying. Yeah, but it's for a game. Again, it's like for a game. Like right. if there was a version the of John Survivor Wendy where line. you didn't yeah. have to. Yeah, it's a virtuous <laughs> line. If, there's a, if there was a Survivor where you didn't have to be physically strong, I would absolutely do Oh, like the Squid Games. If they film Squid Games here, I'd want to go do it. Like the the uh, the, the reality, reality show no. version of it. Oh. Yeah. I have a question. You said that you like games where you lie and manipulate for the game, but you included Monopoly in that. Yeah. I've forgotten how to play Monopoly. Well, because you have I to guess. bargain people out of their stuff oh. at a certain point, so you start going like, you should just sell me that one and here's why it's a good idea for you. And you're kind of being truthful, but you're kind of lying, too. I don't remember the part of the game where you just start bargaining. It's towards the end. You can make offers to people oh, for their that. hotels or houses or properties or whatever. I feel like I never last long no? enough. Jeff, where are you with Monopoly? I feel like when my family played it, everybody kind of crapped out before we got to that level. Right. It's really my family That's when I come alive. alive. Yeah. <laughs> That's when Joey's we, we spaghetti so lights up. <laughs> um, are you guys playing Connections, the New York Times mm-hmm. <clears throat> game, the phone game? Yeah. How do you I feel? I, I just started because everyone was talking about it and I was like, fine. It's I'm like human. The thing I do, I did do it and it was at the end of the night and then I was like, it made me feel a little dumb sometimes and I was like, I should have gone to sleep like 30 minutes ago and mm. I'm doing, I'm, bit, Connections is making me feel sad. So I did it for a little while and then uh, I stopped. I don't think but I... But it is fun. John still does a lot. Yeah. I, I like, you know, when I open it up and it's a new one, I'm excited. And then yeah. after getting two... Like two rows, and I'm like, I, I, I want to Google a hint. That's cheating. Yeah. And then I, I like, I'll come back to this, and I, and then I don't. Or just like, just fucking tell me what it is. Like, yeah. you just like start pressing. I know. No, oh, I let connections is my favorite New York Times game. That's your favorite. So I'm on a different. Yeah, I have a different. I have a different opinion than you guys. I want to hear spicy. it. I just like it the best. That's the different opinion. Well, what's your method? 
Well, have a just, method, just I don't think. Do Being really smart, which seems probably, like an unfair advantage. Yeah. No, but I I like it best. I don't know why. I feel like it's satisfying yeah. to figure it out. It is I think definitely. Wordle is like it feels yeah. random. Yeah. And like it's like, oh no, I did the wrong letters. Like There's no element of luck with connections for sure. Right. Yeah. I like that it's um like you have to figure something out. Yes. That feels satisfying to my brain. Wordle, I kind of hate. Yeah. I play it anyway just to pass the time in the yeah, bathroom you do something like everyone else. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, connections? No, I haven't played that yet. Really? I would think you would do that. I just, I I get to, the time when I would play that game, if it didn't go well for me, it would wreck my day. That's just Really? And I can't risk, I can't risk and it. I'm like, somehow I think everybody knows, like everybody knows, you know. Like, yeah. And like, I, I feel like I would want to do it first thing in the morning or last thing in the day. And then if it wasn't going well, then I would just kind of get bent mm-hmm. out of shape. And, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't do it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm risk averse when it comes to. Your sanity, New York, my sanity, <laughs> my, neuro, my my neuroses. I'm I'm risk averse when it comes to them. No, like online games and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a fragile sense of self, and yes. connections exactly. can just destroy it. Exactly, so mm. exactly. <laughs> so I have to tell you guys. Okay, last week I shared that we were having dinner. And we went around and each said something we're grateful for, which is something that we had done in the, we don't regularly do this, but we had done it in the pandemic. Um, I think someone recommended it. And so every now and then it's always like, should we play a game or should we do gratitude or something like that? So um, Elliot, my older son said, he's grateful for Jesus Christ (laughs) because he's the reason we're all here. (laughs) And I believe. That's what he said. Um, Whoa. And yeah. And so Daniel and I were just like, what's happening? Um, so I mentioned this on the show last week. However, one of my guests was raised Catholic, but ha- is no longer like practicing. But I felt my guests were very like, they didn't, they didn't have much of a reaction to it. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> it's true. I mean, this is exactly right. He's, right. he's good work. They appreciated his testimony. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I had some listeners who were like, I would have I would have a reaction to that too. My reaction is mostly just like, where's he getting this from? Where is he getting that's it? That's what I'm worried Maybe about. Maybe YouTube. Does he watch a lot of YouTube? So that's what I'm arriving at because last night we're having dinner and he asked for a glass of milk. And there's nothing wrong with this. It's a very, you know, American traditional thing. But like I don't we don't normally I don't serve him like a big frosty mug of milk ever. Mm. He hasn't drank milk regularly. He has it in a cereal yeah. or like, you know, milkshakes or something like that. Healthy, something healthy like milkshakes, but not like a big glass of milk. And then he put ice in it and he took a sip and he said, refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> refreshing so, Virgin Mary milk. Where is this coming from? Yes, it must be YouTube, right? There must be some. Does he have like a weird old friend? You know, like an old friend, like down the block, like a fifty-five-year-old man. No, you know, who puts ice in his milk? Yeah, exactly. He he calls him father. He calls him father. (laughs) Yeah, Um, is he is secretly enrolled in Catholic school? Right. Have you been dropping him at a Catholic school in the morning (laughs) accidentally? Because (laughs) yes, but he says that's where they meet. (laughs) I didn't know they go in. I love that part of the stereotype of Catholicism is like a big frothy glass of milk with ice in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we get down on some milk. <laughs> and also, I do feel a little bit, this is sort of like an Alex Keaton's situation, yeah. if everyone gets the reference, wh- where, like, I'm alarmed that he's religious and wholesome. But I am yeah. a little bit. Well, it's, but I, does he even know what Jesus means? I don't think so. Because he's he, just repeating something he heard, yes, right? Yes. And that's the, that is the, Yes, the, my concern, he can believe what he, whatever he wants. My concern is just who's feeding him this. What's he repeating? It must right. be YouTube. It's probably YouTube or a friend at school. Yes. Could he, is he in like the, is, is this your older CCD? kid? No. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's in elementary school. That means he is encountering kids who are religious. So that Daniel asked him, do your friends talk about Jesus? And he said, sometimes, which of course is a, is a yes, uh-huh. but, he, but he's been out of school for a little while. I don't know. Maybe it's some latent Jesus-y thing. There's definitely like Jesus content on YouTube for sure. Because sometimes one of my kids watches really? these videos that are about Jesus and stuff. But I think it's funny. I'm like, okay, if you guys is it in Jesus, that's fine. Is it <laughs> smuggled into content that appears to be something else? Or, or is it like on its surface religious content? Because he watches YouTube probably more than he should. Um, 
In fact, he said, and I, I uh, tweeted this, I asked if Petey had finished dinner, and he said, he ate it up, no crumbs. <laughs> yeah, yep, oh that's God. YouTube for yes. sure. Um, but I've never overheard or seen him watching anything obviously religious. So mm. I feel like it's like, it's it's like like and subscribe. Jesus is real, right? I'm so interested in what I want to get him on here. I you, did like, you ask what? him blatantly? Where did you hear about Jesus? Mm, um, this is no. about that. detective, you, want... you have failed I to ask the most important. Why don't you just ask him where you heard about Jesus? I didn't want to make him uncomfortable. Is it weird if I ask him since I don't know him at all? No, I feel like that's more normal. <laughs> yeah. Think, and then I think I don't I think he even knows what he's talking about. So I don't think asking where he heard about it is going to be. It's like he said, you know what my favorite story is? West Elm. You'd be mm-hmm. like, where did you hear about West Elm? Like, yeah. that's all he's doing is right. repeating something. He doesn't have a personal testimony of Jesus yet. I remember doing Not this yet. as a kid. Like, my mom was cleaning the bathroom and I said... Oh, those stubborn bottom of the bowl rust stains. Have you tried Santa Flush? Yeah. And she just looked at me and was like, What? Yeah, you just pick and it I just, up. Yeah, it's like and then you TV. repeat it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I should I know I should be curious. That's the the parenting advice is always like be curious. I don't know. For some reason I felt like if I'm too intense about it, it'll make Jesus. Where'd you hear about that? Forbidden fruit. <laughs> but just say like where did you hear the word Jesus? Yes. Well yeah. he's heard the he's definitely heard the word Jesus right. before. He's mentioned it before. Yeah. Not but so anyway, here's the thing. Also, he told me a while ago that there's this woman that he watches on YouTube and he really likes her. No, he didn't say woman, excuse me, girl. He watches on YouTube and he just can't stop thinking about her. And he really likes watching our videos. And I was like, Oh my God, it's like, he's in my head. Like, like he's describing a crush. And I figured it would be a young tomboyish Asian girl who plays Peppa Pig games, which is the one that I had seen him watching. Her name Mm -hmm. is Sophie. But the one he was talking about is this woman named Rebecca who's like a fully grown buxom blonde woman. Mm. So I got to find out if she – I was not – she Christian? This is what I need to find out. Yeah. I yeah. need to find out because there's a lot of Rebecca, the buxom blonde who wears tank tops. Mm-hmm. Cont- it's just not what I expected. That's how they get you, right? That's I know. Right? Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I need to find out. Yeah, wow. Yeah, you guys, I have to update you on something funny Please. that's happening on my Jesus. watch. Oh. Which is that I just I I, I looked down because it was buzzing so many times mm-hmm. in a row that I thought oh something must be going. Is that I don't think my mom listens to this podcast, but um, we're taking my dad to this baseball game and we're kind of doing this thing before we get like a picture taken and stuff. And she she had texted. If this is a surprise for dad, what's the plan? And like, my dad is on that text <laughs> chain. Like, it is not a surprise. So I was just, I didn't mean to be rude. And like, I no. was just like, oh, hopefully somebody else is texting my mom. Like, this isn't a surprise. And yeah. mom, if you're listening, I'm sorry. It's just funny because I think you don't know that he's on there and it's not a surprise. And I'm not making fun of you. Has me, anyone promise. straightened it out yet? Well, let's see. Just keep going with it, I think. Let me see. I mean, it just, it just feels know. like we're pranking her. <laughs> It says, I don't think it is. I told him about it, and he's on this thread. Okay, so it's been straightened out. It just was funny to me because I was like, oh, someone, there's been a miscommunication yeah. here. Yeah. I often feel, like my mom will ask a question on a chain that other family members are on, and I feel like I need to drop everything and like help her untangle her confusion when it's like there's plenty of other oh. children who can do this. Yeah, my mom is generally, you know, not. I just think there was some confusion about what this thing was. Yes, yes. So, but now, now it seems Jenny has has. It's all straight now. I'm hopefully my watch will stop right. buzzing. Is it buzzing on the track, Jeff? Are you getting buzzes? Hear okay, good. Are they? But I'm on the, the chain, house? so I saw it. You're on the <laughs> chain. Yeah, you were aware surprise, that it's yeah. not a surprise for my dad because it's like our family does this thing too, where it's like. We're having a surprise party for this person, but it's not a party. We never have a party. It's literally like we all just go to a restaurant and then the person walks in and we're like, we're all here. Right. We do this over and over and Sounds over Sounds like again. a tradition more than a surprise. So it mom- is not. A, I don't think anyone's ever been surprised by one of these dinners, like ever. I think yeah. everyone just knows, oh, I guess we're all going to dinner 
oh, it's everyone. <laughs> it's like usually the plan will just be like, they think it's just three people. Instead, it's, it's everyone. Five. Like literally that's the whole plan every yeah. time. I'm not putting it down. It's just funny So your to mom me. W- like was on just, I mean, she just thought it was the huge. The huge. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, oh, this person already knows they're doing something and yet we're somehow calling it a surprise and everyone's there. Right. Yeah. Do you think your dad wanted it to be a surprise? And no. your mom was trying to. I don't think anyone in my family Lara. ever wants to be surprised. And that's the root of these surprise does. dinners that have no yes. surprise guests. There's no extra surprise guests. Is it possible no one wants to be surprised? I think that's very I mean, possible. I mean, anyone in the world. I've realized I hate, I hate, like hate surprises. Yeah. yeah. Um, most poignantly, when my dad died like 11 months ago, it still was it felt sort of like shocking the timing of it, but it wasn't a surprise in that his health had been declining. Mm -hmm. And I found that kind of death to be much preferable to a surprise death. Right. And I've heard people say like, you know, no matter how they die, the loss is still, is still a loss. And it's like, that's true. No, I, I, it's still a what, loss. You're, yeah. you're right. The person is just as but it's important. Not, it's not the traumatic. mental experience. Right. Is, your brain is building two totally different kinds of synapses in that, or yeah. your synapses yes. are firing. I don't totally. know what I'm talking about, but you it know sounds what I mean? right though. But I mean, I think we all have been to yeah. therapy enough time to know that's probably two totally different totally. brain events. Totally. Right. One is I was prepared for this, but I'm still sad, but I'm not surprised. Surprise is a known thing. That's, yeah. Right, it's, like it's a tra- shock. It's traumatic. Fear. Yeah, it's yeah. right, and it, it makes you feel like you got to be moment. like on guard, and yeah, yeah. totally. Yes. yes, and that's when I realized, I think more than the average person, I just loathe surprises. Like I hate I them too. I'm not spontaneous. Nope. No, me neither. My, we took uh, Gloria and Rosie to Disney World. Disney, which one's out here? Disneyland. 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 And John's. We were like, it should be a surprise. And we get her there and like, she's pretty far in to Disneyland and she's kind of looking around and we're like, well, that's the castle. So where do you think you are? And she was like, I don't like she would, she didn't say I don't like it, but she was just like, and I think it was, was it that she's a spoiled brat? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it, she just like, she didn't know what she was looking just at. Just tell me, right. tell me we're going to Disneyland. I will yeah. like it just as much. Like, yeah. I don't need to like show up. Like you take the hood off and I'm in Disneyland and I <laughs> totally get that, you know, like, also, is that what you like, did? Cause that's yeah. extreme. I don't know if I would have recommended that. Ty Cuffter. Yeah. yeah. Kids, are, kids are also like a person who experience. Like one time we were coming back from somewhere. So we were coming down like that Coenga pass and then you turn up. Like, they have a cleverly placed, like, you could go left to go to Universal Studios, or you could go over the hill and proceed to Burbank. And they have a cleverly placed, obviously, because they're competitors, like, Disneyland billboard, Mm -hmm. as you would be, like, leaving Universal Studios. And I remember one time we were driving in the car, and I just looked up, and I went, oh, Disneyland, we should take you kids there sometime. And Matthew goes... Oh no! <laughs> and I was like, "Why? Oh, why? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. He just like it's like he didn't want to go do something new. He frequently doesn't right. want to go do right. the thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He gets tired easily. He like has a lot of energy, so he's like he leaves it all on the floor. And if you right. are like, and then we're gonna go do this other thing, he'll be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, absolutely not. I used all my energy already. Yeah. So, oh no. <laughs> and it was a picture of Mater too. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to see. Mater, no Mater from yeah, Cars, the right? Truck from Cars. Oh, Cars. I yeah, forgot that one. Yeah, my yeah. kids were into Cars. Oh, several of them. So I've never even seen it. Mm, I, I like, my kids have though. Yeah, I I should. I guess I should show it to. I've been really. Uh, you guess like, you should show sexist what, in that department. It's not like, like Tootsie or you something. It's not like a classic. I, like I don't really. <laughs> care about it yeah no it's about cars it's about cars having personalities well you're sexist in that like you i feel was like, like oh, oh, they'll never sexism. be interested in cars oh. but maybe they'd love cars i don't know i mean they're pretty deep jeff you're a car guy the car the first cars is a very good movie i think kids would like it it's all wow, right coming out hot yeah yeah it's about cars i have to like it i'm a guy <laughs> my first child liked it a lot in fact there was a time period where i had to tell him the entire plot of cars every night at bedtime oh wow i had it down to like a tight five minutes yeah but yeah i know the plot of cars can all we hear too it? well can we hear it okay so there's this let's see what no i spoil- remember i uh, sorry there is going there's going to so be a car spoilers. spoiler yeah so and do the voices <laughs> There's this car. He's like a hotshot car. His name is Lightning McQueen. So you know he's hotshot. Um, That's Owen Wilson? 
Owen Wilson. Okay. And he goes, ka all the time. <laughs> I don't remember why. And he's in this race, and it's like a photo finish. What does that mean? Like, literally, oh, they're tied. You have to look, at a, to look okay. at a photo. So they're tied. And for some reason, then, they have to go all the way to California for some tiebreaker race. So he gets into his truck because he, he doesn't truck. have headlights. This is a big part of it. Mm. Like, race cars don't have headlights. Why would they need them? They don't race at night. And then he gets in his truck that drives him across the country, which is how a race car would move, I believe. I or believe that's accurate. Like, being the day, like just travel during the day. Yeah, but what are you going to do? You can't take a race car on the highway. It's like, you can't wear its tires okay. down yeah, and stuff. Sure. I don't Nora, know. Come on. Questioning, like, they know uh, what they're Wake doing. up, sheeple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so gets in his car, and then they're going on the highway. And then there's like some racing cars who are like street ra- illegally racing oh. on the street or something, and then they like do some stuff to the truck, not sexual, like what? Oh. <laughs> not sexual stuff. Okay, and the then. truck, like, like the truck, the truck is starting to fall asleep mm. driving because it's nighttime and the truck has to drive all the way. It starts to fall asleep, and then they wake the truck up, and then the truck like goes, and then like the back of the truck opens, and lightning somehow gets out on the highway and doesn't know. What the hell is going on? And then he drives accidentally off of an off ramp into a small town um, and he ruins the road somehow. He huh. gets wrapped in a thing and drags the thing and he ruins their one good road. <laughs> and then he has to go in front of the judge the next day. I would not and have predicted any of this. A hot car comes in and he assumes that's his lawyer from his law firm agency <laughs> it's unclear mm-hmm. and he's like oh you're here to get me out and uh, woo 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 like it's like very sexual to this car and she's like actually i live in this small town surprise i'm the prosecutor oh <laughs> so my god it's so it becomes a procedural he gets sentenced to repave the road by pulling this tar machine along the road kids love that kids <laughs> love that and then he <laughs> and the car, like, the lawyer car starts to fall in love, of course. But then it turns out the judge isn't just the judge. He used to be a race car. Whoa. And he's going to teach Lightning how is to... Is he teach him a car? Like, does he look like a car wearing a They're judge all robe? Cars. They're all cars. They're okay. all cars, Allison. Okay. Picture a world There's where no everyone's people. a car. There's no people. Animals? The cars are the people. No, the animals are also, like, cars? the cows are tractors. So they go out and tip the tractors, and that's, like, okay. cow tipping. Mm. And honestly, this whole thing feels very MAGA now. Like, you watch it, you're like, oh, my God, they were doing Trump's work for him. Because it's all very nostalgic, small town. If only we never stopped having small towns where no outsiders ever came in. It's very MAGA. And it's Doc very Hollywood, Trump. just to say. Huh? It sounds like it's Doc a, Well, it's a, the oldest plot in the book. Yeah. And then the 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 car, who I think his name is Doc, teaches Lightning McQueen to, like, race with a team you know, and was then he when he goes, to, no, he was all about himself. You can okay. imagine. Well, fair enough. I mean, that's how race cars usually. Yeah. I mean, are. if race cars had a personality, they'd be all about themselves. Mm-hmm. They're narcissists. All yeah. of them. Maybe sociopaths. Yeah. And then he goes his big race. And I can't remember how, but somehow he's like a team player now. And so he maybe pushes another car across the finish line instead of winning himself. Wow. And then he gets the sponsor, Dynaco, that he wanted in the first place. So capitalism wins, mm. and Lightning McQueen is in platy fucks that car. You know, <laughs> like they're together now. Who pro- they don't oh, show That's why there's the Southern truck, Lightning McQueen. No, Wait. I forgot about Mater. Okay, so Mater <laughs> is played by Larry the Cable Guy, and he becomes right. Lightning McQueen's best friend in oh, that small town. So he gets a woman. He gets it's a best friend too. named Mater. It's it's all, it's every movie. Yeah. And listen, I'm not saying it's not a nice classically structured movie. I'm just saying I've seen it too many times and I don't care for Mater. Although when I went to Disneyland recently, I did pretend that I wanted to have sex with Mater the whole trip. To who? Was your children? Or? No, my friend that I was okay. there with. <laughs> I insisted we go on the Mater ride and I yeah. said I was hot for him. Yeah. And it was a fun bit for me and probably not for my friend. Right. They probably didn't like that bit, but they I were thought it led to something. Bit. It's yeah. a sol- to who plays the lady lawyer car? I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Did he get to California? Yeah, that's at the end. He's in some other race. I don't know. Jeff, you've obviously seen it hundreds of There's times. There's a race in the small Did I get town and then wrong? a race in California? I don't remember who played. Oh, Bonnie Hunt. Mm. Bonnie Is Hunt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the small town. There's no race there. That's where he learns to be a better human being car. Got it. And Is Paul in Newman is Doc Hudson. Paul Newman, who is hot. Wow. Yes. Objectively. He's hot. 
and yeah. good for him for in one of his cars. final roles. <sighs> what a way to go! Yeah, he's the judge. He's the judge. Yeah. The judge slash race car. <laughs> yes. So the the car that he drives in across the country. <laughs> I had no idea this would be such a cars heavy podcast. He but that car gets messed with by other cars, but also falls asleep. It's a truck. Truck. Yeah, it's like a truck that transports a car. Do they stop at a rest stop and get? No, that drugs truck. Off. I don't even know what happened to that truck. That's what I'm I think. Wondering. That truck died. Something bad. Something bad. Yeah, that truck. There's a whole separate movie, probably. Mm, yeah, that truck. Is it a tow truck, Jeff? What is it? Mm-mm. A, tra- a trans- semi. A semi. Oh, yeah. he's in the back of the semi. Yeah, it's like a yeah. car carrier, I believe. I and it's all like fancy in the back of the truck. It's like enclosed. It's not open like a car carrier. I still think okay. he could have traveled during the day. I don't think you're wrong, but have you ever seen fucking Bobby Rahal driving his fucking race car on the highway during the day? No, because now he's dead. But when he was alive, he probably didn't do that either. On regular roads, like going to the grocery store, he couldn't stop himself? His race car? No, those are like, that's like... Can race cars not go like 40? I don't know about cars. But that's like your main thing. What if you just got in a regular accident with like a Hyundai Elantra? Is that a car? Yeah. Probably should be. I think so. That's You're taking like a billion dollar piece of equipment. Out on the road. Feels like they wouldn't let you do that. It doesn't belong to you. <laughs> Wait. It belongs does... to the company, Dynaco, that sponsors you. The company, F1. Right. Um, Bobby Rahal, is this a name that everyone knows? Because I, I know because I grew up in Indianapolis. <laughs> mm. So I know all these. Mario I and Treddy. I know. And also, Bobby Rahal might not be dead. I don't know. I think he's dead. What was the name of the guy in uh, the Wolf Ferrell movie? Was that also Bobby something? For, uh, what was that movie? Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Mm. Yeah. That's all I know about He's it. not dead. He was a fictional character. He'll live forever. He died. I think we should say hello and welcome to the new patrons. But thank you. Now I don't need to see cars. This you is like the best. It. It's like Cliff's Notes. Yeah. yeah. I had a collection. I don't know if they do Cliff's Notes nowadays anymore. I but I had just AI plagiarism. Yes. I had a collection of them. I, I, I bet they're still at my mom's house somewhere. I don't see it as cheating. I see it as... Um, Mm, wanting more info. I mean, they made them, and they knew what was going on with yeah. them. So I feel like if if you were in a courtroom with that judge, Paul Newman, it would be like the company's fault. I right. don't think it'd be the child's fault. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Patreon. Patreon. Hello and welcome to Mikhail Duran. It might be Michael, but it's M I C A E L. I'm going to give it a Mikhail. Mikhail Duran, Brefni Keho, and Debbie Stefan. Hello, welcome. I hope you are loving all your Patreon rewards and such. Patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. Patreon. I also want to tell you guys, you know, normally. I would have segued this way and that way and then back again, like three or four times by now. But that's how many ads there were in the old days. But these are the new days where the ads are thin. So I am relying on your direct support via patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. Also, my substack, allisonrosen.substack.com. And I have finally achieved my badge on Substack, indicating that I am a quote unquote bestseller. I really wanted that badge and now I have it. So thanks everyone. Um, Allison Rosen is your new best friend is supported by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Tropical Smoothie Cafe believes you deserve a little vacay every day, not just once a year. Get on Tropic Time with bright and refreshing smoothies, Tropic Bowls, wraps, and flatbreads from Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Summer mocktail smoothies are back and more refreshing than ever. They're only here for a limited time. So head in and try the fan favorite Island Punch, Mango Berry Cosmo, or Watermelon Mojito smoothies today. Uh, So I personally love the island punch smoothie because it has guava in it and i love guava it has peach guava passion fruit mango and pineapple but the mango berry cosmo smoothie and watermelon mojito smoothies are also especially delicious um they're like bright and refreshing and just perfect for your summer one bite of the tropic bowls and you'll instantly feel like your cabana side visit one of tropical smoothie cafes 1400 plus locations or order online or through their app jeff Yes. It's so warm in here. Can I 
turn up the fan? Is it going to be too loud? No, go for it. Let's see what happens. Are you saying that because I'm sweating what? so much? I can't hear you. I'm sweating a lot, too, and I thought maybe I was dying from how I got nice. windshield no. wiper poisoning. Oh, yeah. Let's oh. address. We haven't even talked about oh. so far, how so you might be in the sunset of your life. Yeah. What I happened? mean, I haven't died in the last hour, so I think that's a good sign. Right. I was stopped at a light on my way here, and my window was down. Because I had just gotten in the car and you know you have your AC isn't working right. yet, so you gotta get some oh, air in there somehow. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and suddenly I'm like, what's that liquid? And I'm getting absolutely drenched in windshield wiper fluid from the guy next to me. And then I look it up thinking, okay, well, it's probably just like dish detergent. Mm-hmm. No, it is either methanol or ethanol, which are poisonous alcohols. And everything, like right when you look it up, it says like poisonous death like <laughs> blinding and stuff it turns out i did call poison control because i'm crazy it turns out but someone in my some went in my eye so i was worried mm-hmm. because it said blinding and yeah. so i called poison control and they the guy said no we had a nice chat he said i'd have to ingest like a tablespoon probably although he did say depending on your weight and i felt like okay is he asking my weight i didn't tell him <laughs> but and then Also, obviously, I didn't ingest any. He's like, no, you'd have to really rub it into your skin. He's like, it's fine. And then we talked about the pandemic and how people got it in their hand sanitizer. And those people got sick. But I'd have to put a lot on. And so I think I'm okay, guys. But Mm -hmm. when I started to feel really hot in here, I was like, oh, no, am I dying of methanol and ethanol poisoning? Yeah. And I'm just going to slowly die and turn into a skeleton, which is what happens. You turn into a skeleton Mm -hmm. almost right away, I think. Did yes. you say anything to the guy? Like I said, hey, ba, 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 but there, it was two older men and their window was closed. So oh. then I thought, should I engage them? And I was like, I'm trying to not engage anyone oh, right. in just literally in any way in anymore case. in life. Yeah. So Let's I thought, that. let's not. Yeah. Wait, I need to hear more about your attempts to not engage anyone because I know that you're a big engager. No, I'm not. In the anymore. past. Never. No, in the past. In the been. past. Yeah. Tell no, me about I the don't new, engage anyone. Tell me about the new Wendy. But Wendy it's not worth it. followed a woman home pretty much. I didn't follow a woman home. Didn't you? No. I so followed her around the friends? corner. Okay. Mm. Because she was yelling at me while I had a child with flu in the car. So I did follow her around the corner. Just what'd you say? And I can't remember. I was like, why were you yelling at me? She was yelling at me. Mm, so okay. I decided to follow her and get into it. <laughs> what'd you and say? Not anymore. I would be so tempted. I can't to do even the same. remember anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. It's not worth it. Yeah, I just assume, and I tell John this a lot because I don't know if you can imagine this, but John gets a little road rage. I know. Yes, and I'm like, please just imagine that everyone on the road has a gun in their car. And yes, they are that is to, because yes. it's most likely, you know, well, it can't hurt to think. That. I always try to encourage Daniel to. We were on our way home from like. The pump station where we were doing uh, mommy and daddy and me or something. So we had Elliot, who was an infant, in the car. And I cannot remember what kind of dumb thing happened between us and another car. But I remember Daniel, like, pulled over. And I was like, drive, 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 drive. And the guy came around and, like, rolled down his window and started yelling something. I was like, why are we just, like, a sitting duck here? Yeah. And I can't remember what Daniel's reasoning was. It was something that I disagreed with intensely. Or even even if he's exactly right, it's like this... There's nothing you can get out of this. Yeah, but nothing the guy's to not be gonna be like, hey, buddy, you're right. I'm going to change oh, the yeah. way I approach things. Like, right. It's just not going to be good. Yeah. Once I quit Twitter, it oh. all stopped having any appeal, any kind of engagement with other. I'm like, why, didn't, why am I wasting my time on earth engaging with anyone I don't know and like? It really is. Uh, and, I, and I do it all the time on threads these days. That's, that's actually the only place that I get into fights with people. But it, every time I do it, it's like, and I likened it once to like furious masturbation. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I got a weird reaction from the people in the room. And by that, I just mean it like it. And I don't, I'm not trying to masturbation shame or anything, but it's just something Good, where I'm masturbating right now. So <laughs> furious, I, just, I felt like you were yeah. bringing that up. I feel to like be if like, you're not going to do it furiously, it's you weird might as well that not you do said it, it right yeah. while I was doing it. But yeah. okay, but I believe you. I'm it's not, not about, about me. It's not right about now. you. Yeah. No, it's not. This is a coincidence. Okay. It's okay, a coincidence okay, okay. that you're. I wasn't yeah. even. See, I'm, I'm not engaging. Eyes closed. See, yeah. I accept your explanation. Right. And I'm not going to engage any further. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, by that, I just mean like it is. Uh, it's a release. But at the end, you're like, I'm exactly where I was when I started. And I feel mm-hmm. a little bit icky. Yeah. 
Yeah, not that, and not that you should feel that way, Wendy. No, I don't. I'm not I masturbating. Great. I feel yeah. great because I just I'm very busy, so I had to get that done while I was here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're multitasking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. De- Jeffrey Tr- Tubin tried to do that. He did. It yes, didn't go well for did he only didn't try? Go well. I think Couldn't he did. do it. Actually, I think I, I think don't he know. realized everyone was looking. Yes. Right at some point, he realized his script. But I also am like, did he? Did he want them to see a little? Mm. Like, was that one of those like for a Freudian, right? A Freudian failure to mute your screen? Yeah, who knows? Right? Know. They, maybe they would have. Yeah, on board. Yeah, you gotta try. You gotta try. Yeah. You'll never know. That's why I was doing it now, just to see if any of you guys was gonna take a flyer on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I was sort of like when someone has something in their teeth and like, are you gonna be the person who says something or are you not? I or no, you know what? It's not like that. It's like when someone has something in their eye or something where it's a little bit like ugh. Yeah. Um and I was just like Both are making me feel like yeah, no, you guys don't have anything. I did. I had windshield wiper fluid in my eye. <laughs> poison. And, and I wasn't going to tell you. Eye. And I wasn't yeah. going to say, hey, Wendy, you got a little poison right here. Yeah, is my face like corroding, like doing a Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you guys just aren't telling me? I mean, it looks more we'll talk about silvery, but oh, no. Okay. Yeah. But but I thought that was just your makeup. But your glasses were so clean from all the windshield wiper fluid. I know, it's right? Distracted. It's a great way to get your glasses cleaned. Yeah. It, the fact that it takes a tablespoon... That seems like less than it should take and with a product that's in poisonous. every car. Yeah. Well, you know how sometimes you hear that somebody was like making like moonshine essentially right. and dies? That's how from the alcohol, like the this unsafe type of alcohol. Regular alcohol is great. Yeah. We all love it. Not a problem. But methanol and ethanol apparently easy to die. What yeah. about what's. Everclear is just really strong, right? Yes. That that's that's banner. regular alcohol, which I don't know what you call that. Regular strong alcohol. The good alcohol. The good one. You know, I don't know that I've heard of anyone who's died making moonshine, <clears throat> but I feel like I've only listened to the first part of people talking about it. Mm. Like, oh, they made moonshine. Oh, no, it happens like every once in a while you hear some like news story that someone was trying to make their own alcohol yeah. and then died. Jeff, you make alcohol. Have you died? I haven't died yet. Not yet. The night is young, though. We have some yeah. alcohol. Yes. You haven't died yet. Were you trying to? Nobody in your house has died. But you're not making methanol or ethanol, right? N- no, but I think the people that make it, they're not trying to make it. It just winds up that way for some oh, reason. And then they chemistry. Think, yeah, they think they're drinking whiskey and it's uh, windshield wiper fluid. Just yeah. Is that that way? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah, I am. This is my new cause. I think we should change windshield wiper fluid to something that's less dangerous if it goes in your mouth. It's not that hard. I think it's going to be easy. Yeah. I think we could This uh... is our new thing. This is the only thing I'm willing to engage on. This is my new purpose because I've been feeling a little like, what's my purpose? What am I doing? Yeah. You know, right. A little existential ennui. Yeah. But now I have a cause. Yeah. It's, but it, possibly when you come out with it, like there's going to be big bad windshield fluid mm. coming after you that no one knows about until yeah. you unleash that beast. Maybe other people have been. I don't know what's happening to my throat, guys, and my voice. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Most likely, heck? yeah. Other people, it, they're getting to me already. <laughs> they're suppressing me. Yeah. yeah. Most maybe other people. Who knows how many women have sat here just like me and said, "I don't know what to do with myself. I feel right. a little purposeless. I'm sort of at sea. I'm going to devote myself to making windshield wiper fluid edible, mm-hmm. and then poof, they're gone." <clears throat> I, stab, stab. Mm-hmm. I listened to this is somewhat related. I listened to this part. Do y'all ever listen to Criminal? It's really good. Phoebe Mm-mm. Judge. Mm-mm. Uh, there's this thing back in the um. Oh shit! You can cut this off. It's bad. But uh, like apparently selling margarine was illegal in uh, Wisconsin. Mm. Where, where to the point where like housewives were like smuggling it smuggling in. it in because it was cheaper, and so it was like they were being you know suppressed for big butter and stuff. Wow. And um. And I was like, good for them. But then they're next, they're like, next we're taking on pornography. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's that. There's also that kind of person bringing there. Right. Wait, sorry. I They went from margarine to pornography. Butter pornography. Specifically. What? No. They, went, they were like, they got margarine. They are like, okay, now margarine's legal. What's They were like, what's your next cause, lady? I'm oh, sorry. I don't know her name. Oh, I see. And she was like, pornography. It's bad. It wasn't, right. she wasn't like pro pornography. Which side was she on on margarine? She wanted the margarine because mm-hmm. she was like, this is like, this is when know, they thought it was healthier, right? This was oh. like just cheaper. It was just like okay. they went to war. It was hard to get butter. Margarine comes on the scene. They tried all these weird ways. Mm-hmm. They're like, you have to color it pink. 
So people think it's gross. Ew. It's a crazy story. Mm. But that, but so she was like, you know, put in the good fight, smuggled it in to like wanted to get arrested, and then they took it to court. And now Marjorie's legal. In she Wisconsin. was like the Rosa Parks of Marjorie. Yes. I can't believe she got exactly pornography equal. to be illegal. And now we can't find it anywhere. Yeah. I know. That's really. Wow. She did I didn't it. know why I couldn't find pornography anywhere. Mm-hmm. There's none. There's yeah. None. Yeah. Jeff, my husband, Jeff, told me there's no pornography yeah. anywhere. It got illegal. That's and I when said, the masturbating okay. got furious. furious. That's why I was masturbating here. Yeah. I have nothing. Just the sight just of us. anyone is so stimulating to yeah, me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because he told me I also, it's it's illegal to look at other people at all. So, Jeff said that? Yeah, Jeff said. What about if you're in the crate? If I come in the crate, well, it's hard because it's a by. very small crate, so I can only see like the bottoms it's of just legs, enough, but those are very erotic to me now. It's just yeah. enough yeah. space for her to, to turn now. around. Yeah. yeah, I can turn around and look at the wall. I also find walls very stimulating mm, now. Almost right. any, yeah, flat Do you surface. like a yeah. sponge painting on the wall, or do you like some kind of texture, or just a flat wall? Oh, any kind of wall. It any doesn't really wall. matter. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it helps to like draw a little butt up there. A little butt? Oh, God. I wish Jeff said you can't draw a butt. Now you can get executed. Oh, really? (laughs) Jeff said I'm not allowed to. Yeah, you can't. But he's just looking out for me. I know. I trust trust Jeff. Not this Jeff. No, this Jeff that's here is clearly toxic. I'm drawing butts. Jeff I'm married to who won't let me draw a butt on a wall. He's a good guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's doing it for your own good. My own good. Yeah. Um, It's a slippery slope. All right, guys. It, we are doing another episode so we gotta be we gotta wrap this one up but before we go let's do podcast pals product picks podcast pals peanut picks all right wendy do you have one oh i'm ready okay this is really life-changing for me did you know that you don't have to take giant fish oil pills no, I didn't know that. You this. can get a good tasting fish oil that lives in your fridge and you just take a couple of tablespoons of it a day and it tastes like lemons. No. That's, Absolutely. It's I don't called like it. Anderson or Henderson. It's some kind of Swedish or that kind of <laughs> fish oil thing. You can just order it on Amazon and you just get it and it's great. A couple times Changed a day? my life. A couple times a day. It's whatever you want, whatever your doctor told you. <laughs> and my, whatever that number is when you go to the doctor and it reflects if you're taking enough fish oil. It's it's so green. It's a hundred percent. It's whatever yeah. it's supposed to be. So if I you think hate those giant pills, them. yeah, which I fucking hated, and I would I never take my fish oil. I don't. Yeah. You get this fish oil that tastes like lemons. I can look up the name, but sure, yeah. Anderson or Henderson fish Some oil kind that of tastes like lemons. Nordic sounding fish oil that tastes like lemons. Pea we all soup be fish oil. Pea soup Anderson's <laughs> fish oil. I don't take a fish oil. Take what anything. you're supposed to be bad? having fish oil? Oh, what are what I'm are we taking it mess. for? Omega threes. Heart. Your heart, heart. yeah, long term heart and okay. uh, cell like health. It makes you like skin. it makes your cells all greasy and slip right through your veins. <laughs> uh, fish have great cells, so yeah. and well, it's great like hearts. how all those people who live in the northern yeah. country and eat a lot of fish, and then Japanese people who eat a lot of fish always have like good situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, They're this is hottest. a true recommendation, and it really doesn't even have a hint of fish. I don't. There's literally no hint of fish. It tastes like lemons, a hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'm going to look up why I need to take it, and then I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm no. Googling it right now. Now, do you get crazy you. diarrhea? No diarrhea. Really? More than usual? <laughs> no, I don't get any diarrhea. What is going on with you guys? Well, I would Girl, Why would you get, get so much diarrhea? diarrhea? Because Daniel gets diarrhea. Daniel. Carlson? Is it Carlson's? Uh, th- I bet that's it, because it sounds kind of, yeah, like someone who's from Denmark. Yes. Carlson's fish... Oil. Daniel, Daniel gets started, diarrhea? Yeah, that's He's, it. Carlson, the very finest fish oil. And you can get the lemon flavor. It's so good. Can I get fish flavor? You can get unflavored. You can also get orange. That Ew, sounds... they have a bubblegum flavor? Okay, oh, now I'm God. out. This is this is real. <gasps> oh, I just looked so it up. Disgusting. These are the four options. Lemon, orange, unflavored, and bubblegum. That is... Oh. Maybe that's if kids have to take it Probably. for some reason. Yeah. For diarrhea. For diarrhea. Daniel started taking some kind of oil, and then he's like, Oh, was really having, I don't need to act it out. He was really having some stomach issues and he didn't know what he had eaten. And I'm like, it's probably the oil. Was it castor oil? <laughs> no. It's probably no. some kind of oil that would give you. The last time I was here. Was it diarrhea oil? No, I was talking about Daniel's regular Metamucil usage, oh, okay. which is still, because your dad is also like. He's a Metamucil guy. He and I might start a Metamucil podcast. Yeah. He could talk a lot about it. I'd love to. Um, Nora, what is yours? Um, 
I feel like Wendy basically did a really good commercial, so mine's not going to be that good. But I'm not a good at commercials. My dentist recommended those little um, Christmas trees to floss. Oh, I've seen and those. I bought a ton of them, and I got really excited. I do like them. I always mm. forget to do it, but it is kind of more fun than floss. It's like a little more what fun What is a little flossing. Christmas tree for flossing? It's like a little pipe cleaner it's for It's like a teeth, little right? pipe cleaner, but it looks like a little... In my brain, it's a Christmas tree. Maybe it's not. Um, Jesus Christ is our Lord. But I think it's just like... That- I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, and he's the reason we're here. <laughs> I think it's just like... It's just like... For for one, I think it's exciting when you're part of a new like new technology mm-hmm. in the mm. flossing world, and it does make it a little more fun. I think with these little Christmas trees. Again, I I bought a million, but I don't use them enough. But now, I do like them. Are I, I have a hazy sense of what they are. Yeah. Is it difficult to jam that in between? Sometimes all your teeth? it's difficult, and sometimes your teeth don't want you to do it. Mm. And honestly, who even knows how hard my my dental hygienist was pushing it. It might have just been like, oh, check that box. They wanted me to sell those loads. So this bitch. Oh, bought you them. bought them but from your hygienist? No. Yeah, she took me to her car and like opened the truck. <laughs> it's like we have fake Louboutins and <laughs> yeah. Christmas trees. Yeah. Um, but I do like um, uh, not like a ton, not as much as when he likes the fish oil. I love my fish oil. But uh, it is a thing that I like somewhat. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going to race right out and get that. <laughs> Jeff, do you happen to have one? I do. Uh, it's a bike helmet that somebody showed me recently. It's called the Lumos Ultra Smart Bike Helmet, and it was a, like a super popular Kickstarter. And it's a bike helmet, and it has a light attached in the front oh, that's and smart. lights in the back, so you can charge them all at Why once. Not? And it has turn signals built into it. What? And there's Whoa. a little thing you can do it either from your phone or there's a little button that you put on your handlebars, Whoa. and you can actually tell people you're turning left or right. This guy showed me his, I and mean, he was all excited about it, and he said, people pull up next to me in cars, and they go, Thank you. That's awesome. I can see you. I can tell you where you're going. He said multiple people pull up next to him and say, that's great. They, wow. run, they run him over. Yeah, and then they run him over. Yeah. And then they, <laughs> cut, then they cut him off and yeah. run him into the ditch. Great. And, and take his helmet. And mine is CeraVe PM Moisturizing Lotion. I wear it during the AM, too. Right. I am not going to play by their rules. I thought you would die if you wore it during the AM. I know, but yeah. I tried it once, and I am still here. To, wow. I'm here to say that wow. was... That was the same people who don't want you to have margarine. They're lying about the moisture. Mm-hmm. I, CeraVe had been recommended to me before, and I was using their moisturizing lotion, and I just, it was fine, but I never loved it. Uh, and then I got a sample of this CeraVe PM facial. Anyway, long story short, I was using body lotion on my face. You can use it on your face. This one is specifically for your face, and what a world of difference. So that's mine. Can I ask you a question, Matt? Yes. If you put it on during the AM, does it have sunscreen in it? Or is this an no. AM that you're staying at home? Or you put it on and then you I put I also put on sunscreen. Sunscreen. Yes. Okay. That's actually the difference between, I believe, the difference between the AM and the PM is that it doesn't have sunscreen in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you're on your own. It's yes. No lifeguard exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So then I put sunscreen on. Yeah. I'm interested. I'm interested in getting a regiment. Oh, regiment like in the For army? Faith? No, you think of a regimen. No, a yeah, regiment. I'm sticking to that. like a band of brothers situation. Educated you run in like Georgia, Easy and we learned regiment. Oh, where's Nora today? Oh, she's in charge of Easy Company. The other Nora Smith it's is here. It's a boot camp. For my face. <laughs> she is went back and is doing D Day. Mm. She flew in to the beach. I'm good at words. <laughs> Gentlemen at ease is what I say after I put it on. <laughs> It is a war, though, huh, ladies? Oh, my God. Yes. We did it. We did it. This has been too much fun. Everyone, thank you so, so much. Quickly, uh, where can we find you, Wendy? Oh, nowhere. I'm a ghost now. Oh, no. Oh, wait. No, I'm on Instagram at Great North Wendy, I think. That's my public facing Instagram. And I also have a podcast with a fellow Allison Rosen guest, David Huntsberger, called These Are Those Tapes. We'll eventually make some more. But for now, there's a bunch up there. So. I'm on one of them. And Allison's on one of them. Mm, and it's a lot time. of fun. And Oh, and Bob's Burgers. And then I also run a show called The Great North. If you'd care to watch it, we are on Hulu and getting more popular every day. So get in now before it gets more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same cause, no matter what. Nora. What, uh, nothing. Um, I don't do anything. Bob's Burgers. Uh, Bob's Burgers. Uh, I'm always there. Um, Dad's and, house. Uh, and your dad's record. My dad's record. 
my God, Allison, what is it? Oh, my God, what is it called? Oh, Roll Up a Song Mm -hmm. with uh, Jay Gonzalez and Pete Smith. I don't know how you find it. Uh, Bandcamp. Google Some it. Spanish. Just Google it. It really is. A, I really love it. I'm very, very proud of him. I asked him the other day, like, how's that? Do, how's that going? He said, it's not nothing, nothing at all. Okay, <laughs> like, so okay. we gotta we gotta push some units. <laughs> yeah, push some units. Like, just a couple would really show, you know, make a big difference. Great. Yeah, I like the album a lot. It's fun. I want it to get onto Apple Music. I don't know if it's there yet. It wasn't oh, when I was God. listening to it. I don't know if it's anywhere yeah. but Spain. I don't know. Go to Spain. Hear it, Jeff. Check out the new episode of the Conversation with Alanis Morissette podcast, where she does an interview with Dr. Romani Dervisala, narcissism expert. Super fascinating. And if I may, check out the Axe Files this week. We have Dr. Anthony Fauci. Ooh. Yeah, he has the a new book out. The, the guy. Wow. wow. Not the racquetball wow. player, the doctor guy. Wow. Yeah. Hey, and Alanis Holy is smokes. on the Great North. She's so yeah. good. She over. is one of the stars of the Great North. Yeah. So, Guys, this was too much fun. Listeners, thank you for listening. I love you. You matter. Goodbye. Hey, do you know about the Allison Rosen Show? 